The long and consequential life of Rosalind Carter ended today where it began, at home in Plains, Georgia, with family by her side. She had entered home hospice care Friday, and when she passed away this afternoon, President Carter shared this. Rosalind was my equal partner in everything I ever accomplished. She gave me wise guidance and encouragement when I needed it. As long as Rosalind was in the world, I always knew somebody loved and supported me. At age 99, President Carter has been in home hospice care for nine months. Their last public appearance was in September, and a surprise, one last ride in the Plains Peanut Festival. The day she was put in hospice, I was on the phone with the family, and I was speaking to her grandson, and uh, the family was just showing up. Today in Norfolk, with military families, First Lady Jill Biden. She was well known for her efforts on mental health and caregiving and women's rights. It's now my pleasure to introduce someone whom I love and respect and cherish, my wife, Rosalind. Their marriage spanned longer than any other first couple, more than 77 years. But more than time, they shared their life's work, values, and remarkably, their childhoods, too. She was born Eleanor Rosalind Smith, a neighbor to the Carters. I was shy and found out that he was so easy to talk to, and we just kind of hit it off really well, and I think I was already in love with him. A proud Navy wife when they married in 1946. Later, she helped manage the family peanut business and community ties that led to politics. First elected Georgia governor in 1970, Rosalind brought her enthusiasm to an improbable campaign. And people got to know him, and when they know him, they vote for him. Thank you both very much. And she's completely objective and unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> I love politics. A small town girl who was at ease on the national stage and comfortable asserting her influence. I was involved with uh, the selection of the vice president. She attended cabinet meetings, developed her own policy issues, including mental health, and in a rare move, testified before Congress. I am here as a concerned citizen. A self-made diplomat acting as a personal emissary of the president in Latin America and Asia. I think that I am the person closest to the president of the United States, and if I can help him in understanding the countries of the world, then that's what I intend to do. The Carters were, of course, tested by defeat when a difficult economy and the Iran hostage crisis led to a bitter loss against Ronald Reagan in 1980. Disappointment opened new doors. The creation of the Carter Center, where they extended their public service, committed to human rights, global health, and building homes with Habitat for Humanity. In 1999, they were each awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I think now is one of the happiest times of my life. There is life after the White House. Fiercely devoted, she bristled when I asked if she felt vindicated by the years of praise for her husband's work after the White House. It irritates me when people say he's been a good former president. He was a good president. I don't worry about his place in history. And now her place is secure as well. Mother of four, grandmother and great-grandmother, a first lady. Rosalind Carter served others with modesty, grit, and charm. And Kelly joins us now from the White House, a beautiful tribute. Kelly, we're receiving so many tributes to the former First Lady tonight. That's right, Kate. Former Presidents Clinton and Bush called her a champion for human dignity and an example of loyalty and fidelity. Her son Chip Carter said she will not only be sorely missed by their family, but also countless Americans whose lives have been made better through her work. Kate? Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.